Hi guys, in this video we'll make an enclosure for a 3D resin printer. There's a lot to talk about, so let's start from the beginning. So recently I bought a 3D resin printer, an Anacubic Photon D2. In order to use this printer inside the house, I need some sort of enclosure to deal with the fumes produced by the resin and the cleaning process. The main idea is to put the printer inside the enclosure and still be able to open up the plastic cover. The other side is then used for cleaning and curing the prints. Access to the enclosure is possible with two doors in the front and one door on the side to access the printer. A ventilator outside the construction removes the fumes while fresh air is pulled in through a ventilation grill. So after some sketching I ended up with this design. The project is mounted on a mobile base and is designed for sitting on a stool. It's of course based on my own needs and workflow. So in case you want to build your own enclosure, you might like to simplify a few things. For example, a straight box without any curves or angles might work just as fine and will be a lot quicker to build too. For this project I'm using standard 12mm plywood from the hardware store, with a thin veneer on both sides. I roughly cut out the parts from a full sheet of plywood like this, and then marked out the secondary cutting lines, like the back and the side panels. One of the side panels has a small door to access the printer, so I marked it out and made the first straight cuts with a handsaw. Next I used a jigsaw for the corners. The door has a small window to look at the printer from the side. After cutting out a hole I used a rubbing bit like this, so a piece of plexiglass can be added later. I also added a thin strip of plywood to thicken the door on the side where the hinge will be installed. For the bottom I glued a 12 and 4mm piece of plywood together. That way I get a solid base with a rebate, which makes it easier to glue the vertical back and side panels in place. I reinforced the corner for the hinges with a piece of wood, and then added the horizontal strip in the front which will later support the front doors. After that the top panels are installed. These panels have one angled cut in the front and one on the side where they connect. Next I marked out the cutting lines for the front panel. The inside was cut out with a jigsaw, and after some sanding the front is ready to install. The panel was glued in place and I made sure it was well clamped to the horizontal strip in the front. I used some pieces of scrap to make reinforcements. These were glued to the side panels left and right. They also thicken up the sides so I can use longer screws for the hinges. With the main construction done I started sanding the edges to smooth out any sharp corners. I used the rabbiting bit once more on the edge of the front panel to create a space for mounting the plexiglass. Next a large hole saw was used to create an opening for the ventilation exhaust. Before adding any paint I did a final test fit and installed all hinges and doors to the cabinet. You can also spot some more reinforcements made from scrap wood. On the right side these pieces also act as a doorstop. All of the doors will later have a small magnet installed to keep them closed. The cabinet will be mounted on a mobile base. For this I used OSB as I still had a lot of scrap pieces laying around from other projects. I made a wooden frame for the top and bottom and added pieces of OSB to the sides. After installing four casters to the underside I cut out the bottom shelf, which was added from the side. It may not look like much but it turned out very stable and sturdy. Next I grabbed some old buckets of paint and sealed the wood with a coat of dark grey. For the cabinet I started with a primer, and did some more sanding between layers to get a smooth result. I finished the outside with a satin light grey, while the inside was left in white primer. So with the main cabinet done, we can now start making it ready for 3D printing. Let's install the fan. I'll start by mounting a ventilation grill into the exhaust hole. I've cut a strip of rubber to create a tight fit. Then I added some hot glue to hold the grill in place. To extract the fumes I'll be using this fan. I wanted something slightly overkill, so I can run it at a lower speed setting instead of using the fan running at full blast all the time. Keep in mind that when extracting flammable gases like IPA, you can't use a brushed motor. Instead look for spark proof EC fans or get advice from a professional. I prefer to mount the motor onto a piece of rubber, so I cut a small rectangle added some holes and rounded off the corners with scissors. I drilled four holes into the top of the plywood, then added the rubber and put the fan in place. I found some big washers and bolts and used their contour to cut some dampers from a piece of rubber floor mat. 
Next, the bolts are installed from the bottom, and then the nuts are added from above. To connect the grill with the fan, I'll use some flexible hose. These types of hoses will add more resistance to the airflow, so use them sparingly. I use a hose clamp to mount the hose to the grill and to the fan. Next, we need some light inside the box. I recycled some IKEA LED strips from a previous project and will use them in this L shape. With the push of a button, I can change the color to whatever mood I'm in. Small flexible cables connect the pieces together. I want the lighting to be removable, in case I need to repair or change it. So I'll make a base for it with a piece of scrap MDF. Some rounded corners are added and then I cut the shape with the jigsaw. After adding screw holes and white paint, I installed the metal brackets which will hold the LED strips. After that, the lighting simply clicks in place. Next, I drilled a hole for the power cable. I used a large hole saw because I want to mount this PVC pipe into the hole. And after some filing, the pipe has a snug fit. To keep it in place, I added some more hot glue. The PVC pipe has the perfect size to guide a European power plug through. I cut out a piece of EPE foam and an opening was made for the cables. Next, the foam is put around the cables and pushed through the pipe, creating a nice seal. Then I mounted the LED lighting to the ceiling with a few screws. I slid an electric tube over the cable and it's time to party. Next, I'll finish the cabinet front doors. I added this aluminum grill for the air intake. It prevents creating a vacuum when the fan is spinning at the lowest speed when printing. The fit is snug, but I still added a few drops of hot glue to keep it in place. Next, I added a handle. After cutting the screws to the right length, I guided them through the back side and screwed the handle in place. The door on the side has a small window made from plexiglass. I used it as a template to drill the pilot holes into the plywood. The plexiglass itself was roughly cut with a hacksaw and then sand it to shape. The protective film is removed and then the plastic is carefully mounted with small screws. The side door receives a handle as well. And then a piano hinge is added and mounted in place with some fine screws. The finished door is then attached to the cabinet. The door works fine, although the magnets tend to be a bit light for the task due to a small bend in the plywood, but it still works ok. The front doors also have a magnet, which will stick to this piece of metal that I screw to the cabinet. I regret this feature because I designed it to work with large kitchen magnets, before I actually bought the smaller ones. Next I installed some really cheap cabinet hinges to the side walls. These are then screwed to the front doors. Note these thin plywood strips that are glued to the doors. They let me use longer screws and create an offset from the cabinet, so I can add a weather strip which will improve the overall closure of the doors. The weather strip is simply stuck to the inside by removing the backing paper and cutting the strip to length. The long doors do need some help to close properly. This is caused by the large amount of play in those cheap hinges but it takes barely an effort to guide them in place so it doesn't bother me. Next I installed this piece of plywood. It will hold the plastic cover of the printer in the open position and is simply attached to the backside with two screws. I still need some sort of stop block at the top to prevent the cover from tipping over. For this I used some unused IKEA parts from my scrap box. With some small screws the metal bracket is screwed into place. A few pieces of this felt adhesive are then used to fill up the gap where you would normally place a large IKEA bolt. The plastic is then slid into place and to avoid scratching the printer cover I added two more felt pieces to the backside of the metal bracket. Ok, so let's test it out. The printer is put into the cabinet, I open the front door, wave my hands and the cover is lifted up onto the plywood bracket. The stop block at the top keeps it in place and I can easily lower the cover back down. I still have to make an opening for the power cable of the printer, 
So again, I cut a plastic tube, drilled a hole for it behind the printer, and added hot glue to keep it in place. To make the foam part, I simply forced the rest of the plastic tube into the foam, and then it's ready to install. In the cleaning area, I've put this plastic tray to contain some of the resin mess. But I did remove those weird things from the underside with the chisel. I also made a small UV curing station to put inside the cabinet. And if you like to see how it was made, you can find the link in the description. So basically most of the work is done now and the project is ready to move to its final location. The nuclear bunker. To keep the printer seat nice and warm, I used a foam tile. Holes were made for the feet and I've cut it to size. Next, a plastic box was sacrificed and I used the bottom as an overflow reservoir for the printer. The foam tile was placed inside and then the printer goes on top. This should collect the resin in case the FEP sheet gets damaged during a print. Because of winter conditions, I also had to install a small heater. So I made an opening in the plastic cover with a round file and then the cover is put over the power cable like this. Next I installed the bolt plate and moved the z-axis to the homing position for the first time, when all hell breaks loose. And this was caused by an aftermarket magnetic bolt plate I had installed. The magnet and steel plate added an extra height of 2.5mm which Anycubic didn't incorporate in their design. So to me the quickest solution was to add masking tape, 3mm from the hole and with a round file I carefully removed material until all the holes were adapted. The build plate can now move up an additional 3mm, and after a quick test, it finally goes to the homing position. Alternatively, you might be able to lower the homing switch on the z-axis, but that seemed more tricky to me. We're almost ready to print now. All that's left is installing the plexiglass. A sheet of 5mm plexiglass will be used for the windows. I marked out the contour of the opening with a ruler, and then did a rough cut with a jigsaw. It's best to use a slow speed setting so the saw blade doesn't melt the plastic. And by the way, all the plexiglass parts for this project were cut from a single sheet as you can see in this layout. After some carefully filing and sanding, the plexiglass falls into place. I marked out the location for the screws, and then I drilled all the pilot holes in one go so they all lined up. The glass is removed and all the holes are drilled again with a larger drill bit so the screws can fall through with ease. Back in the bunker I removed the protective film and the glass is ready for the final installation. Unlike the side door where I countersunk the screws, I simply used washers for the front. This will make it slightly stronger and save me some time as well. Plexiglass is easily scratched, so it's best to use a microfiber towel if you need to remove any dust. Well, looks like we can finally start printing. I'll be using the standard resin with the settings found on the Anycubic website. I poured in some resin, lowered the cover and tried to print a calibration object, which took a while to print and eventually I ended up with nothing at all due to insufficient bed adhesion. But after carefully roughing up the steel plate with 80 grit sandpaper, and increasing the bottom exposure time from 30 to 40 seconds, I had more success with the next XP2 calibration print, which to be honest looked quite good with the standard settings. My next print was a small tool holder I designed for the Allen keys I used with the printer. After removing the supports, I cleaned it in a bed of IPA. Next I sprinkled some fresh IPA over the part, and when dry, it went into the UV curing station. After sanding the support marks, the piece is ready to use. I added two screws and mounted it to the inside of the door. Because of the plastic IKEA tray, I had to move the printer to the right, so only a small flash drive still fits. In case you run into a similar issue, then you can still use a 90 degree adapter like this. For my next print, I wanted to try out a sculpture. I stumbled onto the profile of Dino and Dog at CG Trader where he offers some of his models for free. You'll find a link to his page in the description. I downloaded his Carnot Taurus, which can be printed in multiple parts and has a lot of nice detail. 
But for now I just wanted to print the head, so I made a cut and scaled it up to a length of about 13 cm. I then used Cheetah Box to manually add the supports and started printing. My first attempt failed due to insufficient support of the throat cavity. But I made a few changes and my second attempt came out very nice. After removing the supports, I cleaned the model with IPA and put it into the curing station. I added quite a lot of fine support to the upper teeth, so these had to be scraped off with a knife. And I think the final print looks really great. Lots of fine detail and I can barely see any printing lines. So for me the project works as intended. When the printer is running, all doors are closed, the lights are off and the fan is set to the minimum speed setting. When cleaning the prints, I open up both front doors and increase the fan speed to about 50%, so a lot of fresh air is pulled into the cabinet. Bear in mind that the IPA is highly flammable, so keep all things that might create a spark outside the cabinet and don't use a brushed motor for the extraction fan. Well, I hope this video was helpful to someone. Many thanks for watching, keep it safe and see you next time.